Hello and Fulberson, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat interesting discovery coming from a distant star system that potentially helps us explain how mysterious hot Jupiter planets form out there. Because extremely recently, scientists discovered a somewhat unusual planet that's clearly on the way to becoming a hot Jupiter sometimes in the future. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess first, okay, but what is a hot Jupiter if you've never heard this term before? And in essence, just as the name implies, it's an extremely hot planet very similar to Jupiter. Or basically, it's a type of a gas giant exoplanet that's most likely extremely similar to Jupiter and Saturn in terms of composition, but have extremely short orbits around their parent star, very often in just days or even hours. And as a result of this proximity to the star, we basically expect extreme conditions in the atmospheres of these gas giants, with many of them acquiring a lot of exotic properties, or even becoming what's known as poofy planets, expanding to tremendous volumes. In some cases, some of these planets seem to possess extremely low density, and so some of them sometimes are called cotton candy planets. But because of their overall mass, and also because they're generally so close to the star, they're also essentially the easiest planets to discover. Mostly because they have so many effects on the parent star, and because they generally block the starlight by a really large amount. And one of the best known hot Jupiters is the planet known as 51 Pegasi b, also referred to as Dimidium. And it's one of the first exoplanets discovered ever, found back in 1995. And since so many have been found in the last two decades, yet obviously none of them exist right here in the solar system, there's always been that question of why not? Why not here? Why in so many other star systems? And more importantly, how exactly do they form? Now obviously all these exotic conditions and exotic atmospheres are most likely produced because of the proximity to the star, but these are gas giant planets, and so it's not entirely clear how they actually ended up so close to the star, and usually with such an extremely perfect circular orbit. Although interestingly, these types of objects seem to be more common around F-type and G-type stars, so basically stars similar or even larger than our Sun, and are extremely unlikely around smaller K-type stars, or practically impossible around red dwarfs. And so the mass of the star seems to play a role here, but still nothing around the Sun. So I guess why not? And in the past, scientists tried to explain this through maybe some kind of a kicking mechanism where one of the gas giants potentially got kicked out from the solar system, or maybe planets like Mercury used to be actually gas giants, and what we see right now is just a remnant core. And these types of planets that used to be gas giants and became terrestrial planets, mostly through evaporation, or more officially through hydrodynamic escape, are what's known as Ktonian planets. You can explore this topic in one of the videos in the description, because signs of some of these planets have been previously proposed in a lot of different studies. Either way though, at the moment it's unknown why solar system doesn't have these planets, but what's even more unknown is exactly how they form. And right now there are basically two main propositions. Because of the extremely circular orbit of some of these planets, it's been assumed that maybe they actually form here somehow, possibly through some kind of a leftover from when the star system forms, or because of some kind of accumulation of all of this dust in the location very close to the star. Although in this case, it's not entirely clear how any of this works yet. Unfortunately, as of today, no evidence of such formation has been actually discovered anywhere, and so at least for now, this is just a hypothesis. But a much more interesting mechanism, and a much more interesting explanation, involves an orbital migration through what's known as the Kozai mechanism, or some other gravitational interaction, where initially a gas giant forms somewhere in the region where usually we expect them to form, in a much colder place in the star system, but it ends up forming with either a high inclination or some other unusual orbital parameter that eventually causes its orbit to become more and more eccentric. This is usually referred to as the Kozai mechanism. One of the older videos in the description talks about this more. And so then, through a process of very long changes in orbit, the planet migrates closer and closer to the star, eventually assuming an orbit where it comes really close at the closest point, usually much closer than Mercury to the Sun, and then leaves for a very long time into the region where it was most likely created. And so these eccentric orbits have always been kind of assumed and hypothesized, and would technically explain a lot of these hot Jupiters. 
but evidence for this was kind of sparse. There was actually one piece of evidence we're going to discuss very soon, but more importantly, we now have a very definitive proof that at least one such object definitely exists. And so extremely recently, the researchers behind the paper in the description discovered an unusual young planet, whose name you see right there orbiting around the star, on a very narrow elliptical orbit, making it come really close to the star every 167 days. But more importantly, because its orbit is slightly inclined, and because it's actually orbiting in retrograde motion, or in the opposite direction, this is an evolving orbit that's going to change into circular orbit extremely close to the star within the next billion years. So obviously not anytime soon, but because this is a young star system, these types of timelines are kind of expected. And so once it does become a hot Jupiter, the temperatures here are going to be several thousand degrees, which will dramatically change the planet from what it currently is. But even right now it seems to experience a lot of extreme changes. It basically goes through super hot conditions when really close to the star, to extremely cold conditions for at least 120 days when it's much farther away. And in this case, the scientists know exactly why it's changing its orbit. It's experiencing high eccentricity migration because of the secondary star in the star system. And so here, because the second star pulls on this planet, changing its orbit once in a while, the interaction between the orbits of the planet and the host star are slowly evolving this planet into a typical hot Jupiter. And though by itself, this is of course an intriguing proposition and a cool hypothesis, at this point, it might actually become a theory because as I mentioned previously, there is another such planet that was discovered relatively long time ago. And it's the planet whose orbit you see simulated right here. This is known as HD 80606, and previously this was the planet with the highest eccentricity ever discovered, 0.93 or extremely similar to the Halley's Comet. And in this case, what's intriguing about this planet is of course the fact that it's been studied for almost two decades. Quite a lot of things are already known about it, and especially about how this planet changes at its closest approach to the star, which by the way is going to happen somewhere right here. And so at this point, intriguingly, the temperatures rise from around 800 Kelvin or 500 Celsius, 1000 Fahrenheit, to approximately 1500 Kelvin, 1200 Celsius, 2200 Fahrenheit. And all of this happens in just 6 hours. This has been confirmed with several telescopes. And during this close approach, if you were to look at the star, it would suddenly increase in size by approximately 30 times. And so because of this very sudden change in temperature, it seems to trigger unusual shock waves all over the atmosphere, which possibly resemble something like this. This is a series of images taken by the Spitzer Space Telescope over 10 years ago. And during this period, for approximately a few days, all of these shock waves dramatically changed the atmosphere with winds reaching speeds of 5 km per second, dramatically changing the appearance of the planet until it starts to move away from the star once again. And so during these periods, it's not entirely clear how this actually affects the planet, but it might explain why we see so many exotic effects when these planets do become hot Jupiters. And so because now we have these two planets that seem to have very eccentric orbits and are changing their orbits to eventually become hot Jupiters, this potentially explains how many of these objects form, or at least how a very big fraction of these planets form, in a lot of different star systems. But when it comes to the solar system, because we don't actually have a binary star, and because there are no additional gas giants out there that could maybe influence an orbit of an object to become a hot Jupiter, it also provides an explanation for why we don't seem to have one here. And so at least for now, these two detections provide us with at least one major explanation for how hot Jupiters form. But obviously future observations might discover something else. And so at least for now, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. I'm sure there will be more studies and more discoveries once there are more observations from other star systems, but at least for now, it's a really exciting discovery that confirms a relatively old hypothesis. Hot Jupiters very likely form on the outskirts and potentially migrate closer and closer to the star, eventually assuming a circular orbit. But once something else is discovered, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.